Hi guys, uh, Marvin and Kater coming to you again. How's everybody doing out there? Um, back again for another comic review. Hope everybody is well on their end. Uh, big ups to everybody over at Dark Avenger Inc. Uh, I had a great, great session last uh, night um, with a couple of the guys, including my mentor. He was there. He did a lot of. We just, we just had a blast. Uh, then from there, I joint with uh, members of the YouTubers 3, my group, and we just chatted and had fun and was uh, interacted with one of the newest members of the group, and that was, re that was just really fun to do. Um, Lady Kayla is a blast. She's just a blast to be around. But here I am to give you my review for some comics, the comics that came out this week. Um, got a few here and then I have two that will be going on Dark Avenger Inc plus uh, exclusive reviews on that channel I won't reveal what they are uh, so that's why they're back like this but uh, yeah catch those on Dark Avenger Inc so uh, let's kick it off um, with DC we'll start in DC um, and uh, none other than Batgirl, oh, get that glare out of the way, Batgirl, um, number, this is number 17, um, first of all, I love that cover, beautiful cover, right there, you can see it, nice cover, of Babs and her brother, uh, going at it, uh, um, <clears throat> this is the first issue in a while that, uh, Miss Gail Simone is in a writing, yeah. And, um, so we have a Falk, a Falx on the uh, writing. The artwork was really good uh, by uh, Samper. He was really good. And this is all about, yeah, we're getting into the mind and psyche of uh, James Gordon Jr. Um, and the, the word is out about him. And they, even Dad, um, Barbara, everybody, they, they're trying to bring him in. They, and it's kind of creepy at times with James. It's like he's got kind of an affliction, affection for his sister, and it's like, dude, like this is your sister, like you know, it's kind of cra crazy at some point. Even their mother don't want nothing to do with him. Like she, he comes to go see his mom, who's in the hospital, and she's just like, leave, like don't come near me, and things like that. It, it's crazy. It gets to the point where you know you just be like, wow, like. How crazy or demented is James Gordon Jr.? Um, it's a little scary, but yeah, it's true. Uh, her her brother strikes um, very much, but it was good nonetheless. Um, Batgirl number uh, seventeen. So we move on to none other than Batman. Sorry about that glare. Batman number uh, 17, this is the final uh, story of death in the family of the family, uh, Scott Schneider, Greg Capullo, um, I'm going to keep it real with you guys, I was a little disappointed at this, um, the climax of this story, I was a little disappointed, I didn't feel to me that it delivered on the basis of how this, this story arc began. Um, not saying it was bad guys, but I'm saying that the way it came off to me was like When we saw what Joker he had captured the whole Bat family, you know, and and what we saw that Joker might have done It was like You know, it was like oh, you know, you saw that you like Oh, Joker, no, you did not do that. But then it turned out it was just like the jokes on you. Ha ha ha. And it was, and I was like, okay. But at, but just, this, this, this just did not feel like the Joker that we've been seeing in the past issues of this story arc. He was predictable. He wasn't predictable. He was calculated. He was almost one step ahead of Batman. And it was just like, when he had everybody in hand, he kind of dropped the ball, in a sense. 
and of course we had the typical, you know, the Batman throw down with Joker, you know, you know, punch, 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 I fight you, bam, bam, Batman gets the upper hand, and all of a sudden, Joker falls, and the spoiler part, Joker falls to what we look like a death, and his face comes off, and it's like, Joker could be dead. But I did like, what I did like is how Bruce got into the Joker's head, I won't spoil that. But how he got into the Joker's head was really good. But other than that, it was fine. Uh, but other than that, it was good. But I was a little, I was kind of dis disappointed. Very disappointed in a sense. I was a little bit like, didn't live up to the finale in my opinion. That's just me. But it was still pretty good. I'm not, not going to say it was bad. All right. Uh, let's move on. I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, let's move on to the next. And, um, we'll go with, we'll go with one of the titles that DC is canceling. But as always, guys, I'm a completist. I like to, I'm not going to just stop reading the book because they're canceling it. Um, I'm going to ride it out to the end, as always. Um, Ravengers, excuse me, uh, number nine, uh, Fairchild Stands Alone. Uh, Michael Allen Nelson is N N Nelson is the writer, and Ig Gurara is the artist. And his artwork is pretty good on this. Um, the basis of this story is still they're still continuing what's going on in the story in um, that happened in last issue where the people of this small Colorado town is, are being just they're exploding, uh, having internal combustion, and when. Fairchild and the rest of her team arrive there and see Rose Wilson and Warblade uh, dealing, they think and they're responsible for these people and when they get there they find out they're not uh, and the, the town uh, the town uh, sheriff is like they're not here, they're here to help and everything like that, so Fairchild is like really? really? like you're gonna trust them and everything like that and the sheriff is like I have to trust them um, they might know something that I don't and in the meantime we get a sense of you know Fairchild is still like Catalin is just like Catalin is just like you know I still don't trust you and she's there's like a really good one-on-one -on -one scene between her and Rose Rose Wilson that really I was like okay that was interesting but uh, other than that, that's just the main gist of the story. But we see that because of their mission, kind of was like a failure. Um, the leader of uh, of uh, of uh, break of uh, uh, damn it, what's the name of the uh, the uh, the name of their leader? I'm forgetting his name. I apologize, guys. Uh, boy, um, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? Um. It's uh, Harvest, yeah, Harvest. Uh, this guy right here, that guy right there, that uh, is their leader, and he, they're like, really now, we can't let Harvest know what we did here, or he's gonna kill us and stuff like that. So, um, it it was okay, but um, like I said, you know, because even though it's it's canceling, I'm still continue to read it to the end. So that's all the DC I got. Well, no, I have one more, but that'll go. That's going exclusively on Dark Avenger Inc. Plus. Um, so look out for that. So we move on to independent. Got three independent books for you, and the first one we're going to kick it off with is none other than the Bionic Man number sixteen. I love that cover. That is a beautiful cover. Um, very nice cover. Uh, the person who did the cover, his name is Matt Mayhem. Um, very good cover. Very good. Um, this story kind of is kind of a backstory of, in the sense of how Jamie Sombers uh, became became the uh, the Bionic Woman, as well as who was kind of responsible for the go ahead to do put her Bionic parts in her, and Steve Austin is kind of responsible for that. 
Uh, it also comes to the factor of the f it also comes to the fact that um, Jamie Somber's accident was maybe was not a accident. It was a means of hurting Steve Austin here, um, and I'm not going to spoil who that was that who orchestrated it. But other than that, um, it was really really good. Um, just really gave you a psyche into Steve and how much he cares and about Jamie and everything like that, and and it also gives you a psyche into the fact of who, why this person, the person that caused their accident wants to hurt Steve Austin but uh still was good nonetheless so yeah other than that it's a really uh, good uh, series and um I can't wait to see where they go with, with of course the Bionic Man it's, Dynamite has just been doing a fantastic job very much very much alright so let's move on to the next and um, we were on the Valiant, I believe. Yeah, let's Valiant. Um, yeah. Bloodshot number eight. Ice cover. Look at that cover. Beautiful, beautiful. No, that is not Mr. Sinister, but that is Bloodshot. Uh, so he's still trying to trying to figure out his past. Really, he's trying to figure out. He heads to Project uh, Rising Sun um, to figure out who he is. He wants to get answers. Uh, was all the memories he's been implanted with fake, or was he a real man at times? And he gets mixed up with a little, there are a lot of different obstacles in his way, including I don't want to spoil that for you, but it's just it, it, you're starting to see why it's building up to this Harbinger War that's going to be coming up soon. But uh. This has just been really good. I've been loving Bloodshot. Dwayne Swazinski just does a very good job writing this title. And uh, Manuel Garcia's artwork is perfect. Um, moves very well. Um, it's uh, masterful. as Pretty much. Definitely. Very good issue. Um, don't want to spoil too much on this. Um, but just let's just say... Uh, it, it, if you thought it was going to be an easy ride for him just to oh, walk into this place get somebody to get his memory back or whatever well it's not bloodshot number eight All right and we move on to marvel we'll end this on marvel and i got a few marvel for you uh... six in total but remember one of well no excuse me <laughs> not six uh, i have five in total uh, so let's kick it off with uh, Avengers uh, Assembled. Uh, Kelly Sue DeConnick, of course, on the writing. This is issue number 12. Um, this Once again, we, do, we dove deeper into missions of a Black Widow when she was still under the KGB. And some things she's done in the past, we see that what make her who she truly is and why she, you know, she... She kind of wants to atone for some of her sins that she's done, and uh, with the help of Hawkeye and Spider Woman, this you know she travels to Siberia uh, to confront one of those markers, as she likes to call it, and maybe kind of atone for it. Um, but it gets a little bit deeper than what you think, and uh, we get to see a little bit more of. Uh, not everybody is so easily forgiven for what she's done. Um, that's just the way it is sometimes with a, with a spy and assassin, however you want to classify her. Very much. But it was still good. I, Kelly Sue is... Mr. Connick is doing a very good job on this title. Um, I'm glad she took over from for Bendis. And it's good to get a different perspective of the Avengers. And not just because she's a woman, but just it's always a good different to see how different writers come along and write the Avengers. All right, so we move on to Cable and the X Force number four. 
Um, uh, Salvador Roca, still love his artwork. I've always loved his artwork, and that is a look at that cover, Colossus on the cover. Like, yeah, I'm pissed off. Yeah. Um, this issue basically, I'm gonna put it right out there, explains why Cable and his team are fugitives now. This literally gets into the the aspect of why they become public enemy number one, and that's the main gist of this story. Uh, we see what makes them be, uh, you know, the renegade team as they are. But it also showcases that not all the members of the team, you know, wanted to do certain things. And it's like Peter here. Peter was really against a lot of things that um, that uh, uh, a lot of things that Cable wanted to do, but. Uh, Colossus, aka Peter Rasputin, here was like, you know, we could, we don't have to go that route, but unfortunately, uh, it happened. It happened. But uh, other than that, it was fine. I, I was really well okay with it, very much. Um, but now we get a sense of why they became, why, what led them to becoming. You know, the fugitives they are. All right, and we move on to Scarlet Spider number fourteen. Uh, Chris Joe still does a fantastic job on this. So the werewolves, El Lobos, are still after um, our see. Um, I, I know I'm probably butchering her name. Kane is literally lifeless. He's he had his torso ripped out. Okay, he's he's lying there, pretty much on a mere blink of death. Um, has Kane died before? Yes, he has died before. But this time, he Yosh brings us a something from a past Spider-Man story arc that I thought was gone forever. But um, yeah, it comes back and it wants Kane. Um, and I'm not gonna spoil what that is. But when you see it. If you read this issue, you were like, oh man, yeah, I knew this was, I had a feeling, you might have had a feeling that it would have came after Cain. And, uh, does Cain accept this gift? Basically, in a sense, you could say, Cain got an offer from the devil that he couldn't refuse. That's how I look at it. But other than that, it was good. I loved how, um, Basically, Arach uh, was keeping herself alive from the werewolves and how she was leading them on a, a wild goose chase at times. But other than that, I don't want to spoil that what happens with Cain or the, per the person or being responsible for a lot of things. But let me just, uh, like I said before, Cain sold this, made a, was a, had an offer by the devil and he took it. Why? To keep his good friend alive. Alright. So we move on to... Do, 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 yeah, Secret Avengers number one. Uh, Luke Ross does the artwork. Luke Ross artwork in this was really good. And Nick Spencer. I am familiar with Nick Spencer's writing. So I knew what I was getting into. So now my Avengers circle is complete now I have everything <laughs> so we got Avengers new Avengers secret Avengers Avengers assemble circle is complete covers nice as always all right so the first thing I want to talk about is how many of you guys out there think Maria Hill is the the, the director of shield there are probably a lot of you out there that think that. But I knew that she wasn't. Because they they showcased that in Scarlet Spider a long time ago. Um So let me sh let me actually show you who the director of Shield really is. They showcase it right here. 
right there. Look who that director, what it says, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Daisy Johnson, right here at the top. If you're all those who don't know who Daisy Johnson is, that's Quake. Quake is the director. Maria Hill is only the acting director. So pretty much she's like a figurehead. But other than that, let's talk a little bit about this. Basically, this kind of picks up right after the last Secret Avengers, issue number 37. Um, S.H.I.E.L.D. knows about, you know, the, the Secret Avengers that were, that disbanded afterwards, and, you know, um, we get to see Phil Coulson. He doesn't make his debut, he's made his debut before, but it was good to see Phil Coulson in this. And he goes on to tell, you know, um, Black Widow and Hawkeye about why the director make, wants them a part of this, you know, this group. And every, they go into more detail of it. And this is just more like espionage, Mission Impossible, uh, you you name it. Everything about it. And it gets, it, it's hard for me to even say, because if I tell you too much, it, it'll spoil it for you. But the fact of the matter, a lot of things in this are not what they seem. And in a sense, when I was reading this, I was like, now this is kind of a different take on putting the secret into Secret Avengers. And I was like, yeah, this is a good way to go, Nick, Mr. Spencer. Um, you know, I could really care less about Nick Fury Jr. You know, he still needs to grow on me as a character. I'm not really caring too much because there will always be only one Nick Fury, in my opinion. Um, not this guy. He still has to grow on me. But other than that, it, it, it was good. It felt like a really good espionage book that, you know, I'm always looking for once in a while. You know, like I said, you could, you could take, you know, <laughs> Sam Fisher and, you know, uh, 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 The Born Identity, you know, all those great those like espionage and thrillers and put it wrap it up in this but Avengers style and that's what you get in this I thought it was good very good a lot of some of the end the ending to it was just like whoa yeah and last but not least we're gonna talk about is Wolverine and X-Men 25 yeah the 25th issue of Wolverine the X-Men. Jason Aarons, of course, does a good job writing. And we have Romano Perez on the artwork. I was not too impressed by his artwork, but I still could take it. Um, so basically the, the concept of this Wolverine takes the, the class to the, the Savage Land uh, for survival, survival 101, a survival class 101. In the meantime, we see in the beginning, which I'm not going to spoil who's in the beginning, but it has somebody to do with somebody from Wolverine's past. Um, if you want to know who it is, I'll give you a clue. Read Origins, and you know who I'm talking about. But other than that, it's just a sense of, you know, the class is in the Savage Land, and Wolverine's teaching them survival, to learn how to survive, you know, in, in a harsh environment, and... What where what a place to try to survive in the Savage Land, and we can see that the kids are not really, you know, get you know like I don't know about some of them like I don't know this is not so bad you know things like that, and I want to talk a little bit about Little Brood here. man Little Brood in this um a uh, Little Brood um has become something else now he's after he woke up out of his uh, coma he's changed and boy has he changed um pretty much but other than that it was fine um it was fun you know especially between quentin queer a choir it was fun too just seeing what what he's been elected to he was promoted to something in this i'm not gonna spoil what that is but uh it was pretty dang good. Uh, so uh, once again, it was good to see. It's good to see the book reach 25. Um, it's 
25 and uh that person that I'm talking about from Wolverine's past not gonna spoil who that is you just gotta read it but I gave you a clue if you have not read origins then you're not gonna know who I'm talking about but let's just say it has somebody it's somebody from Wolverine's past and he's come back to torture that's pretty much always Wolverine yeah uh, but other than that um, guys I hope you guys enjoyed um, this uh, review um, as always like I said guys uh, stay tuned uh, tune to Dark Avenger Inc plus uh, to get those the next uh, exclusive review from me I'm gonna have two books over there that I exclusively are gonna be reviewing on that channel um, uh, one from I can at least tell you what companies they're from one is from IDW the other is from DC uh, but other than that this is my running kid saying peace my love stay tuned get real guys as always I'll see you guys next week God willing as always with another comic book review um, but I also will let you on in a little secret since I'm getting close to my 100th ish episode guess what guys I'm gonna be I'm gonna go live I'm gonna do a live review for 100 my 100th episode uh, so yeah I'm letting everybody know I'll be going live uh, for the 100th episode uh, but other than that as always um, stay tuned you'll catch me wherever you can Facebook Twitter uh, Tumblr uh, I'm always around uh, but other than that you guys take care